Hello there, welcome to the QNB Stars League review show. All in English here on Alcas as we look back at all six matches in week eight. We were fresh off an international break, which meant there were just four rounds left until the winter break and therefore the halfway stage. Week eight did not disappoint. 30 goals in total and some tense encounters. And there's a real shape now to the league. As always, we will be having expert analysis in the company of former English Premier League players Nick Summerby and Chris Makin. Plenty to come from them throughout the programme. First, let's remind you how they lined up for Week 8. Spread over two days, Saturday the 18th of November, so Algarafa against Al Salia as the early kickoff. The same time, Marchia took on Al Ahli, and the later kickoff was Qatar Sports Club against Al Khor, which kicked off at 18.10 Doha time. Then on Sunday, it was Al Sad versus Um Salal, the early kickoff at 1600. Al Arabi took on Al Rayand at 18.10, the same time as Al Duhail faced Al Khedatiat. Those were the fixtures for week eight. Let's get straight to the action then. And Al Garafa was still trying to find some consistency and were missing their star player, Vladimir Weiss, for the fixture in week eight against Al Salir, who themselves were missing their in form Wagner. Nick Summy and Chris Makin have the commentary. Better from Tamor. Tamor still coming forward out to Almari. Almari low and half, back to Tamor, saving tackle there by Quijada in the middle of the goal. Here's Belhaj again, you're going to see a lot of him, a lot of him tonight, he's on that right-hand side. Goes to the near post, oh, Alcatan in the league, that's a flick on. Shoving going on in the penalty box, you expect that, but let's have a look at the delivery from Belhaj into the near post again, on the spot. Absolutely, this time it was defended from Garafa. Still in possession now, Garafa. Just waiting for the opportunity. Now down on the left hand side. The need players in the box. Can he deliver? Bad Al to Luis. Luis sees his shot blocks. It's on the far side, pulls it back. Now Catani in the way this time for Salia. Here's Al Zariki. Interesting ball. He did okay, but the chance at the end of the season. This is great build-up play by Al Ali and Al Salia nearly make it 1-0. Al Arazi coming across the back. Here's Almari. Almari to the near post. Al Razi, wonderful run now. Al right to Lazar. Lazar back on his right foot. Oh, gets underneath that shot. Tiny, powerful header forward. Lazar again. Lazar passes a run up against Almadi. Still Lazar. Still Lazar. Just past the post. Kasim was rooted to the spot. Space now for Luis down this left hand side. Back towards Al Yari. Al Yari. Oh, too many chances. Uh, sorry, too many touches running to Al Katani. Do you know what, Chris? I was really hoping so then. You know, when he played the one two, go yeah. on, smash it in that top corner and get your season going. Oh, and Lazar gets the other side of. The full back, oh, the ball going into the box, and he's just too far in front of Timur that time. Wonderful break from Al Salia. Bell had in the middle of the pitch now. Just look at the, the body language, then. Yeah, uh, Chris. What a, yeah. Ball. what a ball, what a ball. Oh, he's hung up for the penalty. Because he comes out, referee will give it. He's got to, he's got to. It's a penalty that, yeah. On the floor, there's the through ball. Over the top, he just hung up. There's a wonderful touch by Lazar that takes it past Kasim. Here we go. Does he touch him? Is it a penalty? Here we go. Just over an hour gone, and it's Tamo who step up against Kasim. Tamo to put Salia ahead. 1 0 Al Salia. What an important goal that is. Sometimes you get the games, don't you, Chris, when it's just difficult, and all of a sudden you stick at it. And there was a bit of quality, a lovely ball over the top, and then there's Tamo to get brought down by Kasim. Sorry, Lazar to get brought down by, by Kasim, but then Timor steps up and eventually what's well, been a difficult game for them. They've taken the lead, they're in the driving position now. 1-0 to Salia. Now all of a sudden, Garafa, Louise on the ball in. Now they've got to try and get some good ball That's through. Up. That's what he's got to be looking for, Aladdin here. Edge of the box, this is a chance. 
Oh, Yari, does he take on his left foot? He does! 1-1! And well, finally it opens up for Al Garafa, just when you think he were taking the time with that shot. Al Yari manages to squeeze one through to the far post, and it's 1-1 now between Al Garafa and Al Salia. Lays it to Al Yari, Al Yari gets it absolutely inch perfect with his left foot and drives it into the keeper's left hand corner. Where did that come from? It doesn't matter, but either way, they're back into the game. What a touch that was from Bellage. Wonderful touch in midfield then. Timor coming. Oh, Timor seen it. He's seen Lazard the far post. Oh, Lazard does it take on first time. Bellage coming in. Bellage to the far post. What a goal. And who deserved it more than anyone else on the pitch tonight? Is that man Bellas? He's been superb. Yeah, absolutely. Top, top, top quality that there. And what a finish as well. Well done by Salir. It was more direct. Came to Timor. Timor puts a lovely cross into Lazor. Lazor can't really get the shot in. He pulls it back. And wow, I'll tell you something. This is good enough to win any game, game of football. Look at that lovely delivery in the box. Just can't get hold of it. Pulls it back even as he's getting tackled with that wonderful left foot and he just passes it into the net and Salira back in the driving seat again it's 2-1 Bel Hadjir with the latest goal what a strike from possibly the man of the match search for the second win of the season Al Garafa that's what we're talking about at the moment but Bel Hadjir again with a wonderful dissecting pass through to Madava oh what a miss by Timor Nick Coming up to 85 minutes now. Oh, what a ball! What a ball! What a ball! Oh, it's in there! <laughs> that man Aladdin, he got in the six yard box, Nick! I can't. And they paid the price for that chance that he missed, Nick! Absolutely. And oh. I've, I've, got, I've got to say as well, probably very happy for Aladdin. Now can he now can he kick on with his with the season and start getting a lot of confidence? Wonderful play down the left hand side as well. Absolutely. Al you, Yari. And you've got to say as well by Al Yari, he's been not as he scored a goal right against nothing. He puts a wonderful delivery into oh. the box there. And well done, Aladdin's there to prod it away. What a ball by Al Yari. It's a teaser. It's a wonderful delivery. And for once, Aladdin gets in that six yard box where it counts for all strikers. That's where he's going to get his goals. And it's a wonderful touch by Aladdin, by the way. Well finished from Aladdin. But here's Bellaz again, Nick. Oh, he's feeding through Lazar Lazar. Gets a bit of Kasim again. Timona trying to slide him. Lazar, Lazar up against two Al Garafa players. Slides it through to Timor. Majdi, Majdi. It's too many touches back to Al Ali. Lazar again. Lazar back to Madava. Can he get the winner? Madava gets the winner. Madava puts Asalia free. <laughs> Look at a celebration from Chabelsi and the players' wonderful sees. <laughs> you just know Chabelsi was fuming on the sidelines. They've let go of the, of the lead twice in this game. They've scored a third goal now with a minute remaining of this match. And it's Madada. Wonderful finish. Maybe Kasim could have done better. Let's have a look at this angle. There's a first touch. Shots low and hard. Kasim's got to do better. But Madava will take that. It looks as though it's going to be the winner for Al Salia. Amado eventually to Luis. Luis on side. Back. Can he get a shot off his mail? What a tackle that is by Mustafa. <laughs> Al Yari now for Al Garafa. Al Yari to the near poles. What a save by Aziz. Referee blows 96 minutes, but Al Salir have done it again. They beat. What a finale that was. The tension was unbearable, and goodness me, imagine had Al Garafa scored in the 96th minute. And there were only meant to be four added minutes, Chris Makin. Don't know where they got that from, do you? <laughs> no. The first, let's just say the second half made up for the first half because it was dire, but the second half just exploded into life. We had everything. I mean, Al Salia once again, uh, they're making up for the, uh, the defensive woes at the moment because they're outscoring the opposition, but uh, it's just great to watch Al Salia at the moment. It's like they've took over the mantle from uh, Al Akhli. Yeah. And what me. did it mean? to Sammy Trebelsi, their head coach, Nick. No, you could see then, he was, they're getting into it at the moment, you can tell the confidence, it's a great mm. place to be. And it's, uh, they made it hard work for themselves, you know, they, could have, they should, probably should have seen it off, uh, but they got the three points, and that's what they're doing, you know, they're doing it. They're, 
They're up there. I think they went to second, didn't they, before yeah. the other they teams did. That's so second spot. Does that give them a little bit of a feeling for what they're hoping for? You know, yeah. who knows? Uh, just a word on Garafa before we start looking at uh, things in a bit more detail. Garafa, you know, in the end, it's another defeat. Yet it was a better performance. They were missing their key player, uh, Vladimir Weiss, and Big probably miss. unlucky not to not to get the draw in the end. Um, uh, I always thought Salia deserved the win. They're but the edge. Uh, Al Garafa at home. They've only got one win to the name so far this season. It's just a disappointing campaign, and you've got to think when you look at it, where are they going to go from here? Yeah. Because at the moment, Aladdin's playing that central uh, striking role. All right, he scored on the night, but have they got a goal scorer that's going to get them, let's say, 15, I mean 20, 15 goals to give them a respectable position? At the moment, don't look like that. Right, OK, let's uh, get into things in a bit more detail. Bel Hadj for Al Salia. You picked him out, both of you, and his experience really shone through. And this is why they've uh, this is why they've signed him, and rightly so. I mean, when you watch them play, they look for this pass a lot down the left hand side with Lazar. You know, he, he comes forward to the ball, and then and then he wants it in behind him. And Bellage is the person. But you know, not only going forward, this is what he was doing defensively as well. Uh, you know, he, he's, he makes the game look so easy and everything seems to be ticking through him. Once, once again, in, I look at the quality, make the run. We talk about this offside trap, this is how you beat it, make the run and he'll deliver and he just dink it over the top. You know, and he's, uh, he, he really is a, a good sign. We talk a lot about Wagner, but, you know, when the season finishes, you'll talk a lot more about this boy Balanch because he's fantastic. Here he does, he starts to move off here now with a lovely little touch. I mean, he goes off the picture now, but... Just keep your eye as, he, as he, he, he makes a lot of yards, really, and all of a sudden when it comes to him, believe you me, he makes this look so simple. He's under pressure, two defenders coming with him, and he gets a left foot and he just passes it into the, into the corner. It's I thought great. it was fantastic. It's great when you can bring a player like that with, with the experience, but who also still is an example to others. I mean, the work rate, I mean, in, in that commentary, that's one thing yeah. you were talking about throughout the game. Yeah. I mean, even the fir poor first <coughs> half, you, Bel you, Hadge was actually having a quite a good game. Yeah, you wouldn't even put it down to experience. Uh, you wouldn't say experience uh, shone out. It was, like you say, his work rate, it was all over the pitch. Right from minute one, by the way, we could have shown a lot more uh, clips of him there, getting him out the pitch, tackling. Not just his passing forward as well, his passing array there. He was getting all over the pitch and disrupting Al Garafa. Right, Chris. Uh, Ali Adin's improvement. You picked out a couple yeah. here. And, uh, you know, <coughs> yeah, if it, he continues to do this, this could be the answer. Yeah, great little uh, run here and um, fantastic skill. But we're just so pleased that he managed to get off the, um, you know, he got his first goal of the season. Hopefully this will spur him on to, to get more. Let's have a look at his movement here. Great work by Al Yarni. He's got the one-on-one -on -one with Abidi now. Bede doesn't close his space. That's where that's where he's going to get his goals. If you look at the top goal scorers, Benezia, El Arabe, they hit that spot all the time. No coincidence. There's even these four or five Alcalde players. But if you make that run there, Nick, and you yeah. get in that space, you're going to get goals. Have a look at El Arabe. Have a look at Benezia. You make that run all the time, you're going to get yourself goals. Well, to, be, to be fair, that's what you've been highlighting in previous weeks where he hasn't been. You know, yeah. you've been saying, look, get into that area and he's done and it And there's four defenders there. And uh, believe you me, that's a difficult... He's made that yeah. look easy as well. He's done really well. That's where he's got to be. The manager's got to be encouraging him. And that's where... They, that's his bread and butter. That's, he's been brought into the team to score goals. So give yourself a chance and hang around in those areas there. No, there was a bit of a battle as well, wasn't there? Enjoyed Abidi it. and Aliari. Enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. And it shows you... You know, I, I, it's so, me and Chris are so alike because he's a fullback and I'm a winger. You know, and you get situations in a game where if it doesn't go your way, you know, you've got to keep persisting, keep going, keep thinking. Eventually, want, I'm going to get that chance. And it starts off here now with BD. Was wonderful at the start. He was absolutely <laughs> fantastic, and he loves it as well. He's good to play. He's like a little terrier. As he cuts inside now, Ayari. Look at this for a tackle there now. There he does. He matches him. You know, and you could see straight away. Hang on, there's a bit of it. There's a bit of uh, competition on here. Picks the ball up. Tries to check him for a bit of pace here now. Not at all. Abidi there's not having it at all. with a wonderful tackle. You think, well, hang on, he's got it. You know, when you're playing, when you're playing as Al Yari, you think, well, hang on, it's not happening for me. But just keep sticking in there. Keep believing, and hopefully you get the opportunity, which comes to him. Uh, Abidi's been caught in the middle and all of a sudden, just watch how it changes here now. From getting that there, getting the confidence here now, <laughs> how it changes, look at him here now, give us a ball there now. A one-on-one, -on -one. it wasn't happening in the first half, now all of a sudden he's full of confidence because he's got his goal there. Here we go, there's a bit of a leg over, just puts it into the box for the goal there. And it just shows you that, you know, anything can change certain situations. I mean, this is at the end of the game as well. 
you know, full of confidence because he's had a wonderful game and he stuck at his task. And even though it was a bit difficult at times, you know, and he gets another effort as well and maybe could have got his side a, a valuable point. But, you know, as you're playing as a winger, keep going, keep going. It could be the 90th minute, you just put that crossover as a goal, you know, and I thought he was brilliant. He really stuck at his task. OK, so the way we've talked about that, Algarafa, it would seem, had a lot of positives to pull out of that. Despite, you know, despite losing again, and they were missing Vice as well. Advice to those improvements. Yeah, but Salou were missing uh, Wagner. They were. <laughs> so, you know. Um, positives for Al Garafa. Al on, on the score sheet. Al Yard is playing well. I'd, I'd like to see one of the two, Al Zariki or uh, Amado, get forward a lot more. You know, there's two midf holding midfielders there. Sometimes one can hold and one can get forward. If Al Gaddafi are going to score more goals, we've got to get more yellow jerseys in the opposition box. I say, I'm talking a bit crazy here now, but the club needs a little bit of a lift. Wouldn't it be good if we get into the transfer window and they got Madsen? <laughs> Place and go out. Are you trying to do the deal? I'm not trying to say anything for Al Corbett, right. but just, for, just <laughs> to see him there. Centre forward role at Al Gaddafi, can you imagine that? Yeah, Alongside Diogo, who's Ooh. still on the books as well. Right, let's move on. Uh, Al Marchia, they were buoyed by three new players coming into the club, Lawrence, Bilal and Abdul Ghadir. They were up in week eight against Al Ahli, who themselves were looking to parade their new signing, Qatar striker Muntari. Teams exchanged chances in the first half. Neither team could break the deadlock. Al Ahli dominated the possession but didn't really threaten any more than Al Marchia. Montari was brought on for Al Ahly in the 57th minute. Maybe just his presence created a little more urgency. Mashal broke the deadlock in the 69th minute. And a valuable three points took Joaquin Caparos' men up into the top half of the table and into sixth. We talked about this. Things are so tight down at the bottom. A win can actually you know, move them pretty high up the table, and that's what's happened to Al Ahly, Nick. I didn't see this coming at all. For me, Mark here on the up, with the players, what they brought into the side, and they brought some quality into the side. Didn't see this at all. Uh, and as well, we saw Al Ahly in the last game, which is probably on the worst I've seen them. So it's a great result, obviously. Mm. Chikawi comes back in, Mutari comes back in, they seem to have got that, 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 that buzz back, pretty much, in their play. And obviously, for some reason, when, when Michelle starts scoring, you know, the, 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 it goes right the way through the side. Why, you know, if you're unbeaten in the, the three games previous to this, to this as our mark here, obviously you're doing something right defensively. Why is your keeper coming out all that way? Monsters are there. Why is he cut his 12 yards out on his yeah. penalty spot there? You know, you, you take a nil nil, don't you? It keeps the run going. Yeah. Mm. Stay in the line there. Let the centre half go and win the header. See, keepers do that all the time, drives me mad. So it's, it's a good win for Ahli. Montari came on, which is nice to see. Malchia, three big... Let's talk about where Malchia go from here. It's a defeat for them. They've got three good players who've come in. They've also signed uh, a goalkeeper as well, Evan Rodriguez, formerly of De Hale yeah. as well, which, you know... I, I, you know, we've, now we've only got three rounds left until the halfway stage. They need to start... You know, move it on a bit, but they've made some good moves here. They, very, very good. I mean, teams like Qatar, Garafa, they'd like some of those players in in, in their squad, that's for sure. He's, I like what I like about the manager there. He talks, you know, he's, he's gone in transition from being from an being assistant manager uh, to being a, a coach. I think if he probably found it hard being at Al Ali. Now he has what he calls his club. Well, he's been, he, he, they've backed him. You know, they've brought top quality players in, so you have the youth. You know, and then all of a sudden now you've got your experience. Your Lawrence comes in, Bilal, Kader, you know, Traore in midfield, what a player he is as well. You know, they have uh, Carry. Carry who's the mm. quickest one out of the whole lot of them. You know, they've got a fantastic squad there. That's why that surprises me. That I don't think that I don't have any fear with them going down. They shouldn't go they're down with that squad. They're on five points now, yeah. A lot of managers saying twenty five points will keep you up this season. So to get to the halfway stage, they've got to be on, got to be on twelve or thirteen points. So three games now they've got to pick up. Seven points. Okay, yeah, it's it's a tough, 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 tough indeed. Yeah, but they, they, that, that, that's that's a squad. Yeah, that's a good, good squad. Well, listen, they can turn around the second half of the season. Now they've yeah, got a definitely. bigger squad. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on. Qatar Sports Club. Uh, they had now gone five defeats in a row. They needed points and they needed them fast. But uh, they were up against Al Khor and done much better themselves. They were coming off four straight defeats. 
game wasn't even a minute old when Sarouche was a volley. Took everybody's breath away and Alcor went ahead only five minutes after that. There was an incident at the other end. When Issa fouled Rabier and the penalty was awarded, Bruno stepped up to bring Qatar Sports Club level. It could have gone either way, and indeed a draw looked the most likely result until a quarter of an hour before the end, when Al Jabri supposedly pushed by a f and Madsen stepped up to score the penalty and give Al Khor a valuable win. What can valuable. you say? Valuable, valuable. Well, we talked about in the preview show, didn't we, how important this game was? They're both at the bottom, so Al Khor come away with a win, and it's a massive, massive three points. A word has to go to the new manager, uh, Al Biawi. Uh, by the way, he could be the new Ugin. The new bullet Ugin, you think? He had a three piece suit on, very similar to us, Nicholas. Is he sharp? Looking very dapper, <laughs> very sharp. When he signed for the club, he had a white suit on. Yeah. And he, I like the look of him on the sideline, and he's obviously got the results, so there's no he point. Was, uh, he was assistant and. Uh, um, uh, Bernard Simondi out there. <laughs> it, it stuck for a second there yeah. for Al Khalatiat in 2012 13. It's a oh, while right. back. So he's got a bit of experience of Qatar, know, knows how it works here. And maybe indeed that's maybe what he needed, did a bit of a freshen up there. Well, he's got the right result. You know, but look, the opposite side of it is Qatar. Qatar is through. That was, for me, it was that's probably. Six, a, six defeats in a row now. It was, it, was a, it was a must win, really. They had to get yeah. something out of that there. And the problem is, I don't think you've got a, I don't think you've got a chance if you can't score goals. You know, we t we just talk about Mark here there with the with the talent what they've got, they they, they just can't score goals. What about so. this old Nick? Wow, what a strike yeah. this is! By the way, hats off, look. <laughs> well, just to settle your nerves. <laughs> One minute exactly. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, as soon as he's hit that there, he just knows he's caught it. And what a strike! This was this was on day one, of course, of two days. I got a message off Chris making after that goal, yeah. suggesting it may be a contender for one put of it, the top goals. Put it in as number one straight away. Number two and number three were left blank. That went in as number one. Mind you, he had a great chance just before half-time, Sarouche. Um, and, and Qatar had a fabulous chance with Habibu. Habibu hasn't scored in seven games now. Oh, sorry, eight games. You, I've got to say, there's know, some soft penalties here as well. There was, but I had, a look at the, I had a look at the penalties, Rod, and, it, what, you know, these, these the defenders both times got caught the wrong side of yeah. goal and raised their arms. And then you there's a bit of tugging now, and yeah, a bit of pushing. You can't yeah. do it nowadays. Yeah. He's having a wonderful start to the season, isn't he, Nick? Your uh, pal. No, you, you've got to. It's fair, once again, it's very this difficult. Is not to, this is wonderful. I like this. Right. What a shot that is, by the way. It's perfect, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. No, but just brilliant, and that's... Great for the manager there. We always talk about alcohol when it always gets a bit. <laughs> when the back's against the wall, they go and do it, don't they? Yeah. Somehow or other, yeah. there they are smiling. They're in a good position there now, so they can kick on again and yeah. hopefully pick some more and, points and from they, there. And they have a habit of having a very strong second half to the season, alcohol, yeah. don't they? Always. Mm. You know, once that winter break is over, they go on a run of four or five games and then suddenly they're out of the trouble zone. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, they do it every season, they go on a little bit of a run. New managers come in, you know, he's had a little bit of an input uh, straight away and an impact as well. I think, I think they'll be OK, Alcourt. With Madsen in the side there, they're always capable of uh, creating stuff. Right, Al Sad. They had slipped to fourth position following Al Salir's victory over Al Garafa. Of course, that had taken them second, if you remember. Al Sad had their key players back, but if any team could make life difficult for Gisualdo Ferreira's men, that would be Um Salal, Nick Summerby and Chris making with the commentary. Taken quickly though. Now he's got time to put his ball in, Sapo's here! Oh, really nearly gets on the end of that cross. Trouble's not over for Al Sad, Pejman coming into the box, no foul given. Rami again now. Great height in the Um Salal side there. Ran in the centre, he goes towards Sagbo. Too much pace in. And now it's that time, though. No. Oh, lobbed in behind that. Oh, it's an old goal, Hamroon! We talked about his season. He hasn't had the best of starts, and that'll go down as a. It's just a pretty much an up and under. There's the confidence. Back to the keeper, he gets it all wrong. It's in the back of the net, and what a start it is as well for Um Salal, leading this game 1 0. Benesha, Nick. Has he had a touch in this opening 12 minutes? I'll tell you something, Chris, great pressure there from Omsalal, brilliant pressure. Now this is when they, they click into life, pushing forward, there you go. Brilliant by Mawas. 
getting out. Al Haidu's chasing after him. Yeah, Only feed takes over the midfield. Sad boat. Out wide to Pejman. Pejman. Can he deliver? Cuts back. Sad in the box there. If he did put the cross in, what a ball there by. Oh, nearly another old goal there this time by Pejman. <laughs> just slips our minds in it. <laughs> Eight nil. There was, there was a little sequence of games where Al Sad and Al De Gea were lashing in goals, weren't they? What a wonderful ball out from defence again. Here Mawas, it was along the ground into the feet of Mawas. They're on the counter attack again. You don't show him inside. Oh, he's lined up a he's shot there. Sad boat. Not going Benesh's way at all. Switch a play by Pejman. Rami no missing about, flicks on by Sabo, they could be unlucky. Oh, they could be business, Pejman in there. Flicks on by Mawas and it nearly, the direct approach, nearly paid dividends for Um Salal. Do you know what they're doing at the moment? They're stopping Bunja any time the ball comes up to him. Ali's been wonderful against him. And Ray Ali as well, not giving him an inch. And when he's taking that extra touch, he's getting caught out. Oh, Here we go, Chris. Here we yeah. go. This is dangerous. Here's Mawas, one on one with Farhad. Let's have a look at you. <laughs> oh, no, just got to go to the far post now. Oh, Al Yafi gets caught in midfield again. Xavi to Benezia. Benezia forward to Al Haydouz. Back to Benezia. Does he take a shot on what a tackle that is by Al Yafi? Oh, he's given the free kick now. And a yellow card to the Usalam midfielder. He didn't deserve sure. that. Didn't deserve that at all, Chris. I thought it was a really good tackle there. You know, good working by Um Salal. They work a bit of space. Al Sad, and there he is. It's no a fantastic chance. tackle. Yeah. He wins the ball as well. And yeah. He gets a yellow card for it. Come on, referee. It's a written it. Look, he sniffed Just out the right danger. There, there yeah. it is. There and what a tackle that was. Here we go. Oh, Xavi, top corner. He said about sticking about <laughs> post. It doesn't matter. He's fired it into the top corner. What a strike by Xavi. And what an equaliser. And he just felt it now, and he just passed it into the net. A wonderful strike from Xavi. And they've not been out of the races at all. Benizia's giving the ball away. He's never seen him give it away as much in this first half, but all of a sudden the backs are up now. Outside of back where they want to be is Hamru. Uh, wonderful turn by Benizia. Twisting and turning, just trying to create a little bit of space in midfield. Gets the Back heel, return back heel from Hamroon. Xavi's got time to whip in across. He's into the feet of Hamroon. Up, Al Haydus. We play on him. Pejman now for Usalal. Sabo, Sabo, Sabo is the bar. What a chance for Usalal. He's cleared off the line as well. Sabo still with the ball. What a chance for Usalal to take the lead into the half time. Wonderful play by Usalal again. With an interesting ball, just turning Morteza back to his own goal. Good pressure from Ishmael, who nearly catches out the back four of Al Sad. It's a pump clearance, and here come Usalal again. Sabo, can he make up for that earlier miss? No. Don't forget both Al Ryan and Al De playing the later game. Ten past six. Al, Al Ryan up against Al Arabi. Al De take on Al Karatiat. So Al Sad really do need a, a win here tonight. Just put those two other sides under pressure. Al 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 he's, not yeah. giving, he's not giving up. What's he giving here now? Watch. He's not even in what? the box. Not again. Yeah, look, 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 not even in the box. I know. Many... What's happening this season? Was it the Al Ryan match? Was it Al Ryan? Absolutely scandalous decision there. Oh. Absolutely. Benezia will step up for Al Sad to put his side ahead. Benezia, 2-1, Al Sad. Benezia grabs his fifth for the season from the penalty spot. Salal on the front foot this time. It's a great ball. It's a ball. It's a ball. It's a ball. It's a ball. Hey. He's got to give it. He's not got to. It. Come on, referee. I tell you what, what a that deal. was. Come on. It's more of a penalty than the first one. 
you know, obviously at the moment De Gea's probably got the best record, but it's about that, you know, Ryan got themselves back in from beating outside. Oh, Xavi can wrap it up, Benesha. <gasps> what a chance for Benesha. <laughs> The other two have done well with the other two. I can't get out of that seat for you. Yeah. What a ball. What a ball. The, the turf kick up as well where he puts his foot. So you, you see where you see the marks like the old tennis when the ball used to be at the line. You go, there, well, there's the there's the uh, puff of powder there. You just go back to the mark, wouldn't you? What a goal. What a goal as we're talking there. Morteza puts the game out of Usalal's reach. It's a wonderful header as well from Morteza. Just switch off there, Ubsalam, Nick. Yeah. I think they, they, they rightly so, to be honest with you. you know, they, it's, it's, been, it's, not been, it's not been good because it hasn't gone their way at all. and They probably do feel down. To Sayak, Sayak. To Xavi. Lovely pass forward by Xavi to Assad. Assad breaking forward from midfield. Still Assad into Benezia. Benezia. Sets his shot on for to Hamroon. Hamroon hits the back. It's not been Zaydan's night tonight. Three goals he couldn't do much about, and that time the ball comes off the bar, rebounds off his head, and it's 4-1 now to Al Sad. Here we go. Good move. Good passing move in midfield. Really open up Al Sad. Burst forward from midfield from Assad into Benezia. Falls kindly to Hamru, smashes it in off the bar. Comes off Zaydan's thigh, I think. Good strike there, here we go. Touched on by... How does that go in? Touched over to, onto the bar by Zaydan, here we go again. Somehow, it comes off his thigh, back into the net. It's 4-1 to Al Sad now, that's the three points. In the end, a convincing victory for Al Sad. Took him in the right direction, back towards the top of the table. Frustrating for Um Salal, and a game that, I shouldn't say this, but it sort of fell flat, Chris Makin. It wasn't a convincing win. I forgot against you there, Rodders. <laughs> well, no, it is convincing when you look at a 4-1... Four, at a 4 one, uh, at a four one. Well, they get the right word, well, Rod, yeah. you know, we're on it straight away. Any I'd, right? I'd say it was a bizarre win. <laughs> <laughs> bizarre's probably you, you look at the scoreline, 4-1, yeah. it was not a 4-1 game. Mm. Unsalal was superb in the first half. They had a great chance of going to go into the break 2 1 up. Sabo rattles the bar just in injury time. In, <clears> he <throat> did, but I would, okay, I'll defend myself there. I think it was convincing once uh, Unsalal had the stuffing knocked out of them. I it, really felt that they came, you know, everything yeah, but, that. Yeah, but what, what, not the, what, not the stuffing out of um, Um Salal? Yes. Okay, so this is uh, Um Salal. Let's look at the positives here the yeah. pressure and the passing. Yeah. They were superb in the first half, Rod. It was a fantastic performance. and They, they were 1-0 up at one stage, and me and Nick kept on saying in commentary, they need a second goal. When you're playing that well, you've got to put these uh, teams to bed. And they're playing outside, away from home, and they more or less dominated the match. It was absolutely superb. This is a passing move here. Well, sorry, uh, we're going to go into a passing move in a minute. It's 25 passes against Al Sad at Al Sad. It's but normally it, the other way round. But this is a feature of the closing down, which was superb in the first half. Yeah, they didn't give Bunja, didn't give any of the players. I mean, what you do when you when you play against top quality players, you do not give them time and space. You make it as difficult as possible. And they, this is the best I've seen them play in the first half. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. And what they're all about is suits them when they when they push forward. They push forward with a purpose. Uh, Pejman came into the side, which we're going to have a look at. But just look at this. I mean. You'd think that Um Salah were the, were the home side. Yeah. You know, they, they've, what they've done is they broke out, they've gone right down the other end of the pitch, and now all of a sudden they've just got possession. I mean, so as, we're, as we're watching this, Gisvaldo Ferreira said that they have a philosophy in Al Sad, they play one way and that's the way they play. Yeah. Is, did he mean this? I don't think he did. Well, they, they, it was very similar to, I'm going to go back to an earlier game of the season, it was Alder Hale, let me out, Nick. Alder Hale versus. Uh, they couldn't get going at all. Garaffa. Was it Garafa? Yeah. Oh, it's 1-1 one, one draw. Very yeah. similar. Yeah. And the top teams have it. They, they, you know, they can't be up for every game. And Al Sad was so far off the pace, wasn't they? I'll tell you something. Because Look at this, he's still got it. Yeah. We're talking away here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 28, I think, it comes to in the end. 28 yeah, passes. Yeah, but I'll tell you something, right? Because they're not playing as well, I know they're getting the three points. If you show a bit of courage like Um Salal and have a little bit of a go, you might get a little bit of change out of them. I don't understand why. I mean, this was, this was that good. 
their performance um Salaam. I mean, this, this this tells you everything. Look, there's 28 passes at the end here now. You know, and they totally bossed the game. I tell you what, it did this situation. This got Al Sad angry for some reason because he thought, I'm going to admit it, this has never happened before. And their game changed, yeah. you know, just because of this, because it was that embarrassing. But yeah. I think if you if you go with a game plan and you be aggressive and you and you try and stop them from playing, you might get a little bit of joy out of it. I really do. Only because they're not in their full stride yet. Mm. OK, interesting indeed uh, what was happening in this. And we'll talk about how, how it became a bizarre uh, game. Not mm. just yet, because there was a moment where Um Salal... Uh, it was when Sagbo hit the crossbar. Yeah. You, you alluded to it to it earlier. Let's have a look at it. it it's quite an, uh, an, an incredible miss in the end. Well, he's got to score from here. Well, Sagbo, yeah, he's an ex-premiership player. That's why he's brought into the, the football club, because he's one of the foreigners, so... He's got to uh, lead the line, and you know you expect him from 12 yards out there to to score the goal. And, and Nick alluded to it as well early in the season against Alderhill, where he had two chances to uh, maybe score a goal. And we just expect a little bit more from uh, Sagbo in those situations there. Now, one player Um Salal have we talk about Mawas, we talk about Sagbo, but there's there's one of the favourites here with Chris and Nick is Pesman. You are a big fan of his, and he. He put, gives it everything. I love him. I think he's. I think he's got the attitude. He's got the right attitude. I mean, look at this. It shows how confident it is. What it is, he started the season off, and then he went on the bench, and then he came off the bench and scored. He's he's a hungry little. He's, he's really got determination. And you know what? When they play, I mean, this is a wonderful bit of play here now. And he's looking not just to poke it past the keeper, but when he plays, they're a different outfit. Mm. You know, I think he should be ahead of, of Ishmael. It's not what the manager thinks. I mean, look at that for a bit of skill there. Wonderful bit of skill. Just tries to slide it through for Sagwell, and that's what Chris has just covered there when he hits the crossbar. And he enjoyed himself out there, but he's got a... We like, you, you want a player, what, if he's not in the team, wants to be in the team. And he looks that type of player, and you want that's, you know, that's why, what, what why, it's all about. Why did he seem to frown upon these, <laughs> these players? Pejman is a playmaker, right? He can do something... Most players on that pitch can't. He can speak little touches, little flicks, and a pass that not many players can and can do. And it's like they're driven out of the, the game, aren't they? Well, I play listen, every I, week. I, 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 love, I, love I was going to say, it. I'm sure you know you've got your own stories about players you played with, and you know you, you might have felt yourselves hard done by sometimes. Sometimes you go into a team, you're part of a team, and your face doesn't fit for whatever reason, you know, and a coach will not fancy a player, and I think you know it becomes frustrating. Definitely. It, 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 it happens everywhere, not just I mean, here. He got took off at the, at the game there, and he, he could see his face. You know, he's thinking. You know, there's nothing worse when you don't know if the manager likes you because it affects you. You're always looking. You're thinking, is he going to bring me off and all that lot? And yeah. I just, I'd like to see him be given a bit of a chance. I really would. Right. Let's uh, just focus now on on some of the not so good moments from that game. And this was a decision which which would change the game. Really, uh, it was a foul that was given. We won't see the free kick. We see the foul. This is in the 37th minute, just on the edge of the box, and the referee Abdul Rahman Ibrahim Al Jassim <laughs> gives the free kick. Yeah. Xavi then takes the free kick and scores. But that is not a foul, is it, Chris? No, never a foul. And they were doing so well, Um Salal. Fantastic display, and you just knew because they haven't got the second goal. We just we, we knew in the commentary box that Xavi was going to take this free kick, and they were going to pay the price for that. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you just you can't get. It's not a foul, but saying that you, <laughs> in that type of situation, you just know you're going to get punished. It always happens against the top sides. We played in yeah. lower lower sides against top sides, and you always seem to get punished. And they didn't deserve it because no way was that a foul. Well, if they didn't deserve that, then they most definitely didn't deserve this next one. This resulted in a penalty. And I remember you being both confused as you're commentating. You couldn't believe. <laughs> Look where he is. Abdul Rahman, uh, Ibrahim al Jassim, the referee, is right there. He's about two yards away. What has he seen here, Nick? This makes it worse with the first decision. You think, you think to yourself, if you, see, if you saw it at half time, you think, I really have got that wrong here now. This is just, it's, it's very difficult to actually the explain. The ball doesn't enter the box, it doesn't, go, it doesn't go into the box. Uh, Al Haidus falls over it. It's wrong, wrong, and he's two yards away. There is no excuse at all. It's, he's looking at it there. But Can you not see if a fella's in the box yeah. or not? And but it's, never mind the feet. Surely, the, if you're an attacker, the ball's got to be ahead of you. Got to be. Yeah. The ball's outside the area, ball's by about the yard and a half. Mind you, it's not even a foul, by the way. No. <laughs> he falls over the ball, Al Haidus. Yeah. Right, let me ask you two questions. First of all, how damaging, Chris, 
How damaging are these sort of decisions to the game? Massively. Because it changed the output of the game. Uh, the, the whole outlook of the game, we came away from the game really disappointed. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's massive. Right. What could, if a bad decision is given by the referee, in the, in the name of good sportsmanship, right? You know what I'm wanting off you now? You said it earlier on today, and you said, I'll tell you what they could have done. What could Al Sadd have done there? Which would be unbelievable sportsmanship. Uh, there was something that happened once at Goodison Park where Di Canio stopped the game, didn't he? Yeah. You know, he stopped the game, and I thought, you're crazy. That, that, for how hard they were there, Rum Salah, I'd look at the manager, I wouldn't be happy. I know Benizia steps up and takes a penalty, but I wouldn't have had him to do that. I'd have said, right, miss a penalty. So You've got to take the penalty, that. we know that. Listen, it'll never, you, you it, it'll never happen, but it, it was that bad of a decision. If you're going to win a game of football, win it fair and square. Yeah. OK, the first one, all right, we'll have a look at that. He's, he's put his foot around, no problem. That one was very out of line. But Nick, so, how many games do me and you watch and they're putting the ball out of play because they think someone's injured. When they're not injured, yeah. the vast majority of the time not injured, and they're all like screaming to put the ball out of play. And you see many Al Sad players saying, you know, let's give, don't score this goal. I There's I no sportsmanship there, was there? No. no. Not at all. do say, they want a penalty. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, exactly. But do you know what would be nice to speak to Ferreira? And say, can you tell me honestly, as a person here now, what do you think about that? Now, we'll send our reporter Shadin one and down yeah, yeah, to seizures while the Okay, if he, if he has anything about him, you know, this is the conduct of the game. Got to say, I tell you what, didn't realise it's wrong. Away with that. At least yeah. somebody give us something. No yeah. one's given anything, no. so everyone's lying to each other. You know, so that's the crazy thing with it. And until some people actually go, hey, what's wrong with that? Then we'll probably get somewhere. Otherwise, it'll. I'll go and watch rugby. I would do. Because we don't want to see that. We want to see physical, good tackles, like the first one there. Don't ruin that from the game. That is what the game... You've got to, we should be saying that is a fantastic tackle, mm. that there. Instead, you know, it's a game-changer. Right. On we go. Uh, Al Arabi, new head coach, Luka Banasic, back in uh, the QNB Stars League. He'd been here previously with Al Shahanir and Al Ahli. Could he turn the fortunes of Al Arabi around? Well, it would certainly be a baptism of fire against high-flying Al Rayyan. Michael Laudrup had now shifted his preference to start with Sebastian and Hamid Allah, and Sebastian had the visitors ahead as early as the eighth minute, just after the half out to batter had doubled Al Rayyan's lead. Hamid Allah pretty much sealed the win with a third goal just before the hour mark. Al Arabi didn't give up, Naji pulled one back, only for Vieira to head another in for Al Rayyan two minutes later. The last word, though, did go to Al Arabi when Naji got his second five minutes from the end. Well, Al Rayan pick up another win, not really surprised, Nick. Flying, absolutely fine and looking like they're enjoying it. Mm. They really Hamadala and Sebastian starting. Y yeah, well, no, well, obviously, we'll... we'll, we'll and Mutuali. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, look at Mutuali, another player there who's, who's not in there, but he wants to prove a point, but the flying Al Arabi, I like the manager, hope he gets a bit of time, you know, it's only a little bit too early for him, but... I think the two teams, I think Ryan and De Gea made a big statement this weekend, really did. Alan again, Nick, your favourite player? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a, I mean, we interviewed him the other day. There he is, this is what he does. Simple as that. Just put it right across that, right across the face of the goal, and there you are, just to side foot it in. And these top sides are doing this very well. You'll see when De Gea, you know, it's just getting them balls across the front and then the centre forward just side footing it in. But they look like they're enjoying the football, really. Mm. I, I can't wait now because it can't be far away till the Champions League starts coming. So these sides here now, especially the Hale, looking forward to seeing what they're like. Do you think they're a bit more free flowing? What I'm getting at here, Chris, is yeah. maybe earlier in the season, they were, I don't know whether it was, is tension the right word? It wasn't as free, you know? And now it seems uh, to be a bit more relaxed. And I, I don't just, know what was going on there, but. I just think the win against Al Sad, where the. the they were outplayed in the first half, but second half they really came into it and gave Al Sadr, you know, good going over and got the win as well. Psychologically, I, after losing yeah, so many never, times to Al Sadr last season. Exactly, yeah. correct, exactly. And all this talk about not being title contenders, they are, because I watched this game and they were well on top. All right, they give two goals away, but for the majority of the game they were, they were well on top. Another, by the way, let's mention Jimmy was left on the bench, and another young kid played, Ali Hassanin. Hassanin uh, started the match, so. You know, Loudrup's always playing these young players as well. Two great headers by Nati, but Al Ryan uh, deserve this. And the, the only, it, aren't they now? Yeah, the, on, the only thing what I think, because De Hale are the, I mean, they are the strongest side. 
Al Sadd and Ryan have got to they've, they've got to beat him one between the between the pair they've got to beat him twice to give him any chance because I can't see him losing apart from that in those big games there I know obviously next week is we'll have a bit of a sample with it Al Sadd but yeah. you've got to, they've got to beat him twice someone's got to beat them twice and you think it's got to be it's got to be either Ryan or Al Sadd can they do it well Alder Hale, you mentioned them. They are moving into overdrive. Trying to stop them in week <laughs> eight. <laughs> Al Kharatiat. Goals, goals. A lot more goals was the order of the night in this fixture. Eight for Alder Hale in total. There were two goals for Captain Masakni, a hat trick for El Arabi. Nante He contributed a further two. Moes popped up just before half time with one for himself. Slap bang in the middle of this Alder Hill goal first. Tim Kaneen joined in to put two on the scoreboard for Al Khritiat. But this spectacular evening was all about Al De Hale. Let's just run the goals now, now, now. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Let's enjoy them. Yeah. I said they were in overdrive. They found a further gear again, Chris. They're in the groove and all the goals look exactly the same way. You know, it's, they're coming through the middle, the ball goes out wide. It's either, you know, the ball slip past the full back, the cross comes in, and then they just flood the area with so many red shirts. It's, you know, the, you know what they've done here now? They've got the eight goals tonight and they've opened up the, the goal scoring, uh, the difference as well. They've, they've gone oh, yes. nine. <laughs> um, Nine points ahead of Al Sad. Uh, sorry, nine goals ahead of Al Sad. Ten goals ahead of Rao. So even if it comes down to the crunch at the end, they've got an extra point with the goal difference. It's some buffer it, after it, eight weeks, isn't it? In one game, they've done yeah. it. This could be next week against Al Sad. If Al Sad don't get their act together in this one, yeah. it, this could be. These are ripping. They, they say now. I mean, you look. You look at the game. You think, well, look at Ryan. Well, that's good. What Ryan have done. You think Al Sad. Well, you got your three point. These blew them away by making a statement. These said, hang on, this is a new level there now. This is something, they, they are, they're just flying. And you have to say, we do we keep repeating ourselves, we was chatting to Chris about it. It's all about the manager. The manager is, a, he drives these boys. Yeah, Jamal Belmadi really, Jamal Belmadi, I should say, is, um, he's some character, isn't he? Yeah. He, he, he just does. Focused, we, we, he? we were talking earlier this morning when we came in, and remember the Eric Gerrick side. Uh, I was more impressed with the Loudrup. The queer side, very, very good side. But he's got this style of play, what he's brought to the football club, Balmardi. Superb, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, they're just, they, and what it is, it's the, we talk about this tempo, they're above everybody. The fitness, Will they but, crack the AFC Champions League this season? The, do you know I what? So. Do you know what? The, well, they, they, they're murdering this league, aren't they? So yeah. what, why not? You know, and they, are they better than what LJ were? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Let's have a look then. I mean, they're set up now to go on and go on. Let's see, let's see what you can do. This is the best what we've got at the moment. So they, they, they went four 0 up. You can say they took the, the, the foot off the gas and they get two goals back. And they had another chance as well. I could have said they could have made it four three. But they do outscore the, the opposition. But they do concede goals. Mm. They still concede goals. They can't keep that clean sheet. That <laughs> Balmardi he goes mad it's on the sideline. They conceded two but scored eight. It almost <laughs> doesn't even matter in that game. Right. OK, uh, let's recap the results uh, from uh, week eight for you then. Al Garafa losing 3-2 to Al Salia on Saturday. Malchia, they lost 1-0 to Al Ahli. And Qatar Sports Club, six defeats in a row uh, for them now. Al Khor picking up a valuable win there. On Sunday, uh, Al Sad 4-1 victory over Um Salal. Convincing, bizarre, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Al Arabi, uh, they lost 4 2 against Al Rayyan. Look at Benassi, the new head coach there. And Al Arabi, a lot of work to do still. Al Duhail, 8 2 winners over Al Kheratiat. Goodness me. What a victory. Uh, let's show you the QNB Stars League table then, the standings. Uh, this is how they are. Al Duhail uh, there, look at that, 22 points. They lead the way. Look at the goal difference there, 21 uh, plus 12 for Al Sad. That's the difference that Chris Making was talking about. Al Sad, Al Rayan, Al Salia make up the top four. Um Salal uh, in fifth there. Al Ahli have moved up the sixth, which is fantastic. Uh, Al Garafa, Al Kho, Al Khartiat there, Al Arabi in 10th, Al Marchia 11th, but Qatar Sports Club still down there with just the three points. But again, you know, a win for them, it's still quite tight down there. A win for them, Nick, could just catapult them a couple of places and who knows? Yep, still, they're still in contention there, you know, but they need it as soon as possible. I know they're waiting until January to bring more players in, but 
That seems a million miles away. That they've got to get a victory somehow or other, and hopefully a a has got he's got to score. He has to score. He's been brought in to do that. He's got to try and dig him out. I think Babatundi comes back shortly as well. Now then, there were 30 goals this week, and so many good ones. These have been picked out. These are not the top three. These are all headers, Chris making. And you said you wanted to see him again. It's very strange. We had a glut of headers this weekend, and. Uh... I wanted to put one of the headers in as, as number three, but I just couldn't pick one out from there's some fabulous headers and I couldn't um, I just couldn't decide. <laughs> so we had too many good headers, it was wonderful. This is Natik, he gets two on the night. Look at this for the header. Boom, far post, no chance for the keeper. Uh, yeah, it was a strange weekend. We had um, I think we've shown about six headers here. It was fantastic. This is a superb one. From a very tight angle by Vieira. He's been love headers, don't we? Nick? He's been a great sign yeah. signing as it well. It was a good Vieira. call. It's just to it, pick this out more. Look, look, look at this. this one. Look, look. I mean, there it That's is. That's a great header. But what they talk about there is when you get the when you put the crossing, put the pace on it as well, and he just guides it in. Yeah. Look at this again. Another difficult one. He's, he's pretty much going. He's turning. He's got to swivel a little bit, and he just glances it in. It's no good me talking about editing because I could not edit. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. <laughs> you see that? I say just turn and swivel and all that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, those those are not the goals of the week, but they're fabulous. They were contenders, but they didn't make the top three. But they were all-headed goals. Now we do the top three. Who's going to start with number three? Nick Summerby, who gets number three from <laughs> Javi. Yeah, Javi. Bad decision, but it was an awful decision. But forget about that. Yeah. He needed somebody to step up when they weren't doing very well. But there's your man there, Javi. And he had that feeling. It was a perfect area for him. And... He got his side back into the game with a, with a, with a wonderful sign. I think we give him another year. He's finishing this year, isn't he? Give well, us another year. <laughs> One more will do. I mean, look at that there. Absolutely. We thought he was going to put it in the other corner, didn't no, we? No, well, I said, st I said, I said oh, stick, no, yeah. stick Reale on the right-hand side. It's a good job, because he just he would have just been stood there. <laughs> Number two goes to who, Chris Bacon? Bell Hajj. Wow, yeah. Caps a wonderful Love. performance off. Great touch in midfield. He starts to move off, makes up about 40 or 50 yards. And he, he just, he, you know, he really deserved this. And this is a wonderful finish. He passes it into the far corner. And like I said, caps off a wonderful uh, display. Here we go again. Look at the ground he's making up. Ball's there, further up the pitch. He's on the halfway line. When we talk about his experience, what about his legs? Still going strong. OK, number one goal from week eight goes to who? Nick Summerby. Charous, yeah? Charous. Sarouche. Right. Sarouche. Sarouche. Look at this. Do I need, 56, to, do I need to say any more? I mean, all of a sudden the ball just goes up. There it is. Bang. Look at that. Very much like a Paul Scholes, wasn't it, at Bradford? Remember a long time ago? Yes. Yes, very much. Is like the Rooney one? Sorry, that's the, that's the one, yeah. The one when he that was his opening on, debut, sorry. wasn't it? Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, Sarush. A superb goal. Uh, Nick Summerby, Chris Megan, thank you as always for your company and your wonderful analysis. That's it for week eight. We'll see you on Thursday, the 23rd of November, for the QNB Stars League preview show as we look ahead to week nine. From all of us here, bye for now.